Amen. Thank you very much, Elder Abel. Um, good morning, dear listeners and brothers and sisters. We will continue with um, experiences with the shepherd this morning as we have been looking at um, Psalms chapter 23, Psalms chapter 23. And I have been saying that about 3000 years ago, David wrote one poem that should help us deal with the troubles of life today. Only 118 words, if you count in the King James Version, I dare say are the most familiar words of all the Psalms that have been recorded and canonized in our Bible. Reading this Psalm shall kindle a ray of hope for the hopeless, shall bring healing to the hurting, shall guarantee help to the helpless, encouragement to those who are discouraged and provide strength for the weak. This morning, allow me to deal with, uh, to share thoughts uh, from verse four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Verse 4 reminds us that in this life, there will be times when the pastures will not be green. There will be times when the waters will not be still. And there will be times when the paths will not be peaceful. Sometimes we will experience the touch of suffering, loss, and the hand of death. And in those moments, life will appear meaningless. In fact, for some, this experience had le has led them to dismiss God altogether, to reject God's involvement in the events of human history. But the psalmist dares to claim that when humans are passing through this valley of darkness, the shepherd comes even closer to them than ever before. Today, I want you to notice that um, so far from verse 1 to verse 3 of Psalm 23, David wrote addressing the shepherd in the third person masculine singular. He writes, he makes me, he leads me, he restores he leads me in paths, third person, masculine, singular. But now as we get into verse four, and the subject is death, David writes in the second person, masculine, singular. You are with me, your rod, your staff. It is as if from verse one to verse three, David is talking about the shepherd. But now as we get into verse four, David is talking to the shepherd. Someone actually said that there is a profound theological proclamation found in this change from he to you. While the shepherd or while the pastures are green and the waters are still, while the paths are peaceful, God is in front leading, God is behind shielding, God is above sheltering. But now in verse four, when the sheep faces death or deep gloom, the shepherd comes so close that he is almost touching with the sheep. He is there to console, he is there to comfort. This proximity of God the shepherd 
the touch of his staff at the moment of total despair means everything to the sheep. Allow me, brothers and sisters, this morning to just share two thoughts, two devotional thoughts this morning from verse four. Point number one, point number one, the shepherd has dealt with the substance of death. Point number one, the shepherd has dealt with the substance of death. You see, friends, death is not a question of whether or not, but rather for, all, for many of us, all of us, it is a question of when. Sooner or later, all of us will die if the Lord does not uh, return soon. Somebody said that one of the tragedies of life is death. It's real and it's certain. But I'm saying this morning, the shepherd has dealt with the substance of death. Not that the shepherd says or writes the valley of the shadow of death the valley of the shadow of death, shadow. We know that in order to have a shadow, there ought to be the substance or the object plus light. I am saying this morning, the shepherd has dealt with the substance of death. And this is where it is. A child of God does not deal with the substance of death or will not face the substance of death. The child of God only faces the shadow of death and, and, and the shadow is not dangerous. <laughs> the shadow is harmless <laughs> because of the cross of Jesus Christ. Death in its substance has been removed and only the shadow of it remains. And my brothers and sisters, nobody is afraid of a shadow for a shadow cannot stop a man's path, even for a moment. The shadow of a dog cannot bite. The shadow of the sword cannot kill. The shadow of death cannot destroy us and will not destroy us, God's children. In Jesus Christ, Death has been demystified. I am saying this morning, the shepherd has dealt with the substance of death. Hebrews chapter two, verse 14, the servant of the Lord records, he speaking of Jesus Christ shared in the same that through death, through his death on the cross of Calvary, he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. I am saying this morning, the shepherd has dealt with the substance of death. That is why one day soon we shall declare, even as Paul records in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55 and verse 56, O oh death, where is your sting? O oh grave, where is your victory? This moment, my brothers and sisters, is coming soon and very soon. One day we will declare these words of victory over even the very shadow of death. Ellen White writes in her book, Darkness Before Dawn, page 50. From the prison house of death, they come clothed with immortal glory. The last lingering traces of the curse of sin will be removed. Yes, my brothers and sisters, this is our message for this morning, that one day, even the very shadow of death shall be removed. Point number two, the shepherd is with us in the valley. The shepherd is with us in the valley. David writes, for you are with me. The shepherd is always there. You see, the sheep are safe in the valley 
with the shepherd than on the mountain top without the shepherd. The shepherd's presence is the sheep's strength and comfort. Somebody records the little child out at sea in the storm is not frightened like all the other passengers on board. The child sleeps in its mother's bosoms and arms. It is enough for it that the mother is with it. And my brothers and sisters, this morning I am saying it is enough for the believer to know that Christ the shepherd is with you. Christ the shepherd is with me. Thou art with me, David writes. I am saying this morning, the shepherd is with us in the valley. Somebody wrote, I have in having thee all that I can crave. I have perfect comfort and absolute security for thou art with me. His presence gives us this perfect comfort. And comfort, my brothers and sisters, is probably the key word in the verse. Carrying with it, within it, a message of hope, a message of meaning, and a message about the future. I am saying this this morning. The shepherd is with us in the valley. And this is it. He is with us in the valley. Christ himself in the person of the Holy Spirit is with us. I am speaking to someone today, even this morning, and you are probably feeling and you know that you are in the valley, down there, cast down by the shadows of the trees and the mountains and everything else, intimidated, frightened, and scared, left alone. Be aware of his presence this morning. Be aware of his presence, my dear mother. Be aware of his presence, my dear father, my dear brother, my dear sister. Be aware of his presence. The shepherd is with you in the valley. David writes, for thou art with me. And so we have nothing to fear. He says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The shepherd's crook is poetically described by two names, the rod and the staff. And someone said the rod is there for protection. The rod is there for defense. The rod is there as an offensive weapon. In other words, the rod is meant for the enemy, but the staff is there. That crooked end is there for rescue. The staff is there for restoring. The staff is there for lifting up. In other words, the staff is there for family. While the rod guards, the staff guides. While the rod protects, the staff provides direction. I am saying, my brothers and sisters, the shepherd is with us in the valley. And therefore, none of us has anything to fear. We have nothing to fear for the shepherd is with us in the valley. Allow me to close with a quotation from Desire of Ages, page 480. The servant of the Lord records, as the shepherd goes before his sheep, himself first encountering the perils of the way, so does Jesus with his people. When he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. The way to heaven is consecrated by the Savior's footprints. Every burden that we are called to bear, he himself has already borne. My brothers and sisters, the shepherd is with us in the valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
shall we pray. Gracious, kind, and loving Father, thank you, O oh God, for being with us even this morning, for the gift of life, and for the promise that, Lord, you shall be with us on the mountain top, but you shall also be with us in the valley, in the shadow of death. We want to pray that, Lord, you will now give us this peace as we begin this day. And that, Father, even as we break out into our prayer rooms, Lord, may you hear our prayers as we pray and call upon your name. Father in heaven, we thank you for your graciousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.